Queen Shay and thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to be making a fun loaf of soap using red velvet cake from Aroma. This smells so sweet and delicious. It's got notes of dark chocolate, strawberry, cocoa, buttermilk, tonka bean and vanilla and I just know that this one is going to discolour. So when I do this I plan on doing layers. I'm going to have a red layer with a thin white layer and then another red layer. The white layer I'm not going to put any fragrance oil into and I'm going to colour it with titanium dioxide. And for the red layer I'm going to create it using a mix of some really red mica from Nurture Soap and some Shiraz mica from My Micro Obsession. And then once we've got the base done I'm going to pipe the top and the piping will be in white. There will be no fragrance in that piping. Um, but I will also be topping it off with some chocolate soap balls and some sprinkles. So let's go and make some soap. In my big bucket here I have a mix of my oils and in my smaller bucket as usual is my lye water which I've had some Tassa silk dissolve into. I'm going to pour it into my bucket of oils, give it a blend up and then I'm going to split it up for the colours. So I have this split out, I'm going to do my top and bottom layers and then I've got this bucket left over with some white for the middle. I'm going to start by putting my colour into each of these pots. So I've got some of this Shiraz from My Micro Obsession and I'm just putting, I think that is my half a teaspoon, no that must be my teaspoon. So I'm putting about a teaspoon of that into each of my red buckets here. Just need that a little bit more and it looks like I need to order a bit more of this one. And then we're going to add some of this really red mica just to make that Shiraz pop. But it will, that Shiraz will make it a little bit darker red as opposed to that dull red that the Shiraz mica has got. I'm not going to mix the colours in just yet. What I'm going to do is mix my first one, put the fragrance oil and then pour it into my mould and then we'll go ahead and do the other layers. Okay, so that's looking fairly solid in there so I'm going to pour my white layer over the top and I'm going to use my, um, my spatula just to break that fall.
top of red velvet cake here. I have my soap frosting in the bag which is setting up well and I'm using a Wilton 1M tip to get a really nice frilly sort of piping look on this one. Now with my soap this week it was a little bit different. This week out on my Facebook page I asked my customers whether they would still buy my soap if I was to start using palm oil in the soap. Now when I first started my soap making journey I actually didn't have the intention of making necessarily palm free soap. For me it was more about the fact that I have um, constraints on storing products. But I've been working hard and clearing spaces and um, clearing excess stock that I no longer need or use and I thought well I might give it a go. Now I know that palm oil is meant to harden soap bars when you use it, giving a longer lasting bar of soap and I made myself a few little um, test bars and when I got down to sort of like that thin slither that you get left over with and it starts to go all soft and mushy and really hard to handle, with the palm oil in it, it hasn't, it's stayed as a nice piece of thin soap. So I thought if I can provide someone with a longer lasting harder bar of soap, why not? And if people are still quite happy to buy the soaps with that palm oil, um, I would have a go at it. So I made sure before purchasing my palm oil that it was a sustainable one and that the supplier of the oil is part of the RSPO who manages the production and growth of palm oil, which my supplier is. So I know that it is a sustainable palm oil. I am still concerned about the environmental impacts that previous farming of palm oil has had on our environment. But I also do think, and please don't have a go at me for it, I also do think I would be quite um, contradictory to say that I wouldn't use it for those reasons because I think of all the land that has been cleared so that we can have things like olive oil and sunflower oil and rapeseed oil and the land that's been cleared so that my house could be built. I think that we have destroyed so much land in other things as well and we don't think about the sustainability of those sort of areas so I'm kind of a little bit torn with that sort of idea as well but I do appreciate that there is a lot of concern with previous farming of palm oil and most of my customers have said that they would be fine with me using palm oil as long as it doesn't dry out the skin which it won't because you calculate it to be used in the right quantities. I've only had one person that um, has actually said not to use it um, saying that it was bad for you. Well actually palm oil isn't necessarily bad when you use it topically. Um, ingesting it there are concerns there however palm oil has lots of properties because of all the fatty acids that are in it so when you read all the information that's out there it's actually quite a conditioning oil if it's used in the right percentages so not too high the oil itself is said to have lots of antioxidants, it's anti-inflammatory, um, it's also antibacterial and contains vitamin E. So in terms of it not being good for the skin, that's not entirely true. It just depends upon the quantity, like anything, too much of anything can be bad for you. But in this recipe I've calculated it so there's just enough in there to harden the bar of soap but still leave it really nice and moisturising. My soap recipe still contains shea butter and shea butter has unsaponifiables which means that there's some of the fatty acids within the shea butter that doesn't turn into soap and leaves it within the soap as free butter or free oil and that creates that really nice moisturising feel that you often get from my bars of soap. So that will still be a part of my bar.
chocolate balls in there and I'm just going to give this a quick spray with some rainbow glitter which is from my micro obsession and I've got it in one of the nurture soaps glitter pumps and then just to finish this off I have some sea salt which I've mixed with a little bit of that um, Shiraz mica and some really red mica and just put a little bit of alcohol mixed it all together and that's just put a really nice dye onto the salt sprinkles and we're just going to sprinkle that down the soap. So this is red velvet cake. It will sit here for about 24 to 48 hours before I come back and cut it and we'll see hopefully that we have some nice layers in there and a nice creamy top. We'll be back soon. Hi everyone, I am back to cut red velvet cake. It is smelling delicious. It has toned down a little bit as it's saponified, um, but you can still get that real cakey sort of smell for a minute. Um, I'm really, really happy with how it is looking. So I've got it lined up in my multi-bar cutter and I get this from, or I bought it from Mark's Soap Cutters who are here in Australia and I've got links to his page down below. They are handcrafted um, cutters and they are of beautiful quality. So I've just lined that up so that I'm not going to cut into my soap balls and I'm just going to push down and see what we've got. Okay, so it would appear that putting palm oil into my soap base has made it go very hard. So I may have to remember to come back a little bit sooner than 24 hours so that I can go ahead and cut these bars. So these are going to be very simple bars with just those layers and hopefully they will darken up just a little bit. So you can see we've got the two red layers of the cake with the cream in the middle and a nice piped cream top to go with it. So I will keep an eye on this over the next couple of days and we'll try and put um, shots of this as it cures over the weeks as well onto the video. I'm hoping it does darken up, darken up a little bit because um, red velvet cake generally is a dark red colour. Um, but if it stays this colour, I'll be happy with that as well. So I hope you've enjoyed watching me make my red velvet cake. If you have, please leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below and maybe some suggestions for some soaps that I can make in the future. If you haven't already, why not subscribe to the channel and um, maybe hit that little bell as well and it will notify you the next time I bring you another video. So thanks for watching and until next time, have a good week.